I just need to make sure. Oh, there you are, Kate. I'm looking for you. And I'm frozen. My cat, my my um, my contract with my seller That's was the same day internet because they weren't ready. I didn't realize that that, that was a huge I'm issue. I figured like, as long as they said go live, it's like, you're right. I think that's the hundred dollars. I didn't see the voice come through yet. Did you notify you and maybe Rich when they send it in? Typically. Yes. And I saw that. I saw the notification come in. It's a hundred bucks. I'm not sure that like. I would go log into your MLS. Okay. And it should be posted there on your. Okay. I'll double check that. I should make sure you guys were like. No, no, no. No, that's they notify us because if you don't end up paying it, we're accountable for it. Okay. But that's all I want to know. I want to know if that. Was going to hit my normal fees that you guys have. No, out, it wouldn't or? be with us. It would okay. all be with them. But they, they'll hold us accountable. Okay. No, I'll get you. I don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> so help me. Yeah. I don't like breaking thumbs, but I will if I have Exactly, right? That's the first time in the campaign. That was actually right. 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 a long time in those three. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
someone in the chat to confirm that you can hear me. My computer right. says you can. Yep. All right. Thank you, Sam LaFue. We are going to get rolling. Welcome, folks, to our October meeting. Our last meeting here. Last meeting here. Yeah, we should have we should have planned a little um, funeral or something. We are moving, not to get ahead of myself, but in case you've missed the, the, the many uh, communications, we are moving in two and a half or three weeks, something the like 28. that, the 28th. Mm -hmm. So Thursday, the 28th. So Dee is going to share some more information about that. We've got a fair bit to cover today. I need to realize which screen that I'm operating on. But let's do our MVVBP as a reminder. Jeff, why don't you kick us off? Just because we made eye contact. So we might read our, read our <laughs> mission. Doing this right now. It's like what they do. Uh, to build careers worth having, business worth, worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth viewing, and legacies worth leaving. Thank you. And for those who are here in bold, this is like an all together everybody day. Who all was in bold today? I know a handful. This is like we're just going to be together. And if we go to the cross country event afterwards, it's just from, from glory to glory to glory. That was yes. that was focused on in bold today in a, in a really helpful way. No, it's great. Just get in the zone. At least we like each other. Um, Preston, you're looking away, so I'm calling you now. Uh, what is our vision? To be the real estate company of choice for agents and the customers. Thank you. Aaron, our values. God, family, then business. Thank you. Tim, can you take um, the first five through communication? And let's go Lillian from Creativity On, our belief system. Win-win uh, or no deal. Integrity, do the right thing. Customers always come first. Commitment in all things. One more. Communication. Seek first to others. Do you have a background in radio? No, I don't. You should. Uh, that, was, <laughs> that was like, I need you to read <laughs> audio books to me or something. Creativity, ideas, and people are results. 
teamwork together, everyone achieves more. Trust starts with honesty, equity, opportunities for all success results through you. Thank you, Lillian. <laughs> and then finally, we'll do our perspective. Doug, can you handle this last one here? That second word's pretty long for me. Okay, <laughs> you can break it down into syllables. <laughs> Okay. A technology company that provides a real estate platform that our agents, buyers, and sellers prefer. And what's it mean? Oh, or a book? Oh, or something? That's the Beatles. It's the Beatles. Good. There we go. All right. We'll be fine. <laughs> we're exactly. Don't kill it. Sorry. I all right, thank you, Doug. So moving forward. Uh, for mission moment, I didn't have a particular story that I wanted to highlight, um, but I did want to highlight, I think for me, um, I've had COVID and I've been vaccinated, so it's easy for me to think, oh, whatever, this isn't really a thing anymore. But I think I've spoken with an agent each of the last four days where someone in my family has been impacted in this way, um, some in very, very serious ways. Um, so just a, a continued reminder to be uh, cautious and thoughtful, but also prayerful and considerate um, as we support each other and our clients in this crazy time. Um, I yearn for the day when COVID is no longer really a part of our vocabulary, and I don't know when that'll be. And uh, thanks, along with this room, the, the stink bug. <laughs> Did not, I did not escape it. Does anyone have particular concerns with relative to COVID in, in, in family members that would be good for us to know about anything like that, more serious situations? Yeah. I, I have several family members that are on medicines that actually decrease their uh, immune system. Yeah. And uh, I, I have a, my mom's going through cancer right now. So mm -hmm. that's main reason why I do this. Um, yeah, yeah, it's 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 crazy. Yeah, Doug. So just gonna, is everyone aware of the taking D3 and does anybody know about that? Share share for a second. Yeah, I mean that's one thing. D3 is a huge immune booster, and if you do your research on D3 and zinc, those are powerful in fighting off that. That's helpful. Thanks for, thanks for sharing. I know it's crazy and not, not to get into a, what, what do you need to do? That's not my, not my place by any means, but. Um, that's, a, that's a broad brush stroke that you yep. really can fit everybody. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate that. Crazy times. Um, Miss Amanda, can you help us welcome uh, our new agents? I don't know if any of them are in the just here. today. <laughs> oh, of course she is. I'm so familiar with him that you don't even feel new anymore. Well, this month we welcomed five new agents. So Jeff Helfrich, Christopher Camp, Brian Prosser, Sarah Walsh, and Rachel Wolf. Jeff's here. Yeah, all right, Jeff. Welcome, everybody. Jeff was here for bold this morning as well. He's, he's all in. I respect, respect you pouring yourself into it. Also, a special welcome back. Uh, for those of you who know and love Amy McConnell, she returned. You, I'm sure you all saw that. She's returned and has joined uh, the CLE team in the last three or four weeks, I'd say, um, as they kind of grow together. So we're, we're glad you're back, Amy, if you're on the other side of the wall. Um, all right, Dee Dee. All right, guys. Hi, everybody. Hello. Here we are, October, talking about September. How, where is this year going? I would oh like goodness. to know. It's crazy. Um, so our profit share for September was 47064 It's another awesome month. Year to date, we are at 371510 uh, which is up 30.3% year to date, which is fantastic. And um, we have 80 different um, agents that have profit shared so far. So well done. That's a testament to all of you realizing what a wonderful company you work for and, and inviting all of these agents to come and be a part of this awesome company. So well done. Our September cappers, congratulations to all of them. We have Jessica Darty, Jose Medina, Susan Schmidt, 
Melissa Steiner and Brenda Wise. So congratulations to all Thank of you. Let's uh, go. Melissa is a first timer. And I don't know if Brenda is, but I know it was Brenda really is not. Okay. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he has done it before. Okay, and congratulations to our September top producers. Um, as a reminder, this is anyone who um, had production of 500,000 uh, and closed uh, and or three units. So this list includes another long one. Killing me. <laughs> Candace Adams, Andy Alamini, Tina Bagnoli, Shannon Bragg, John Brown, Laura Brown, Nicole Burke, Jonathan Burris, Daniel Butera, Cindy Carpenter, Olivia Christie, Sheila Crossman, Jessica Darty, Julie Day, Jared Dutton, Patty Dutton, Allison Eslich, Valerie Espensheed, Brandon Fleming, Amanda Garcia, Amy Guthrie, Tom Heidi, Eric Henry, Rachel Hogue, Samantha Holmes, Nikki Horvath, Michael Humphreys, Ryan Jones, Tracy Jones, Lori Judson, Russlin Call, Jamie Kelly, Scott and Lynette, Lynette Killey, Marcy Clee, Mike Crum, Annabelle Lakota, Christian Lamb, Brianna Lehman, Daniel Makara, Kevin McCauley, Jose Medina, Jen Lucci, Talithia Mummerts, Cassie Persons, Tiffany Pepper, Nick Remark, Jonathan Riley, Christina Roberto, Melissa Sanford, Roman Smith, Melissa Steiner, Lance Trainum, Michelle Chance. Uh, Jackie Wakeham, Ken Weaver, Stephanie Webb, and Brenda Weiss. There we go. That's an awesome representation also of all of our locations. I mean, we, we have agents that are killing it in every single one of our um, locations. So here yeah. in Canton, Mansfield, Ashland, as well as um, Worcester. So yeah. congratulations to all of you. And uh, hats off to Didi for processing all of the commissions <laughs> represented in this production. So. Um, team effort. Amanda um, rocks it on making sure that everybody is compliant so that we can make sure that um, you are all getting paid on time from, from that regard. So, Amen. Yes. Well done, Definitely everybody. a team effort. All right. Okay. So. I don't know if you knew this or not. But <laughs> we are moving to a new <laughs> building, not here. So um, our new address, 4974 Higby Avenue, we're in Suite 201. I know some of you have taken some sneak peeks because you're going to go to spend a stone gate to do some closings. I just happened to be there for the first time yesterday in a while. And oh my gosh, it looks so good. I'm so excited. Um, the items in the kitchen, if they belong to you, Please take them when you go. Um, or if you know somebody who those items belong to, please alert them to come and get them so that we can make sure that we are um, getting uh, people's things back to them. Um, they will not move with us, though. I just want to make sure everybody knows that. So all of you out there in Zoom land, if your items are in our kitchen, please come get them. We are not going to move them with us. We will end up donating them. Um, also, any mail that you may have in your mailboxes, please also clean that out. The last week we have to move, the last we have to pay the movers, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Profit share. <laughs> right. Our movers, um, we will have a moving company that is coming to move the um, all furniture from the market center. So any agents that have offices, and I'll be sending a separate email about this as well. We will move your furniture in your offices. Um, I would prefer that if you have um, your personal effects that you're going to box up, I would prefer that you move those separately on your own, just to make sure that your items get to where they belong. If you happen to leave your boxes in your office for the movers, um, that, please make sure you label it properly so that we know if it just shows up in the, in the new office where that needs to go. They will be here on the 28th. Our office is going to be closed on the 28th. Um, as of the 6 p.m. on the 27th, our IT company is coming and pulling down the server and any type of internet things that would make things function in this office. So you won't be able to use the printer on the 27th after six o'clock and th there will not be any internet that's available to you on the 27th after six o'clock in this office. All of that again is moving to the 20, on the 28th to the new office. Um, and we're hopeful that on the 29th, that if everything goes off without a hitch, that we will be back in business and, and open, ready to go. Any questions? In time yes. for transmittal, right? Yeah, um, of course. <laughs> so our contracts can be updated with the address as far as on the 28th in Dot Loop to use? So yes. 
it'll probably be next week because I, I am working on that and I'm going to change it because that way title companies and everything yeah. start to see that it's not happening on the 27th. We need it to happen before then because whatever you're processing now will most likely be closing after we move. So yeah, that will be uploaded that week. Um, so, and also will be, I've, I've made an, um, you know, a change your address thing with the post office, Lord knows what that's going to look like or how long that may possibly take. Yeah. So please, anybody who uses title companies that typically would mail your closings, please make sure that they have our new address. Um, again, I'll be sending, we'll be sending out more detailed information to anyone in the office here, but just keep an eye on the newsletter. This is going to be in the newsletter with the address and, and any other um, information you might need. Dee, are we going to be starting to pass out keys for the new office so it's not happening in one day? Um, well, I'm going to let you know that soon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's going to happen is um, at the new office to get into the building, there's going to be like those magnetic things where you don't need a key and you can just use the code. However, there's a little bit of delay on that, as you can all imagine, because there's delay on everything in our world right now. Um, so it's going to be, you're going to get keys to get into the building, but then I'm going to take those keys back to you and you're going to get a code to get into the building about two weeks later. But I'm going to work out those logistics with Jose and Joanne to make sure we get everything that we need. Um, but yes, we'll make sure that you have those before we move. Anyone else? Super exciting. It's, it's, I think um, you will all love our new space very much. It looks really great. You, and Stonegate's going to be right across the hall from us. And I peeked through your beautiful glass mm -hmm. door when I was there yesterday. And that looks awesome. Andrea looks really good. Cool. <coughs> so after we move in the 28th, um, if you want to go to the next slide, um, we're going to have a little party. <laughs> so we'll have a new office open house on Thursday, November 4th. It's going to be from 4 to 7. This is for obviously all of you, the leadership team, your clients, um, our partners. Um, so plan to put this on your calendar Thursday, November 4th from 4 to 7, some light appetizers and beverages and just to celebrate our new digs. Black tie. Uh, if you prefer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just you. Whatever yeah, black tie from the waist up. You know. <laughs> Zoom attire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Zoom formal. Zoom professional. That's, right. That's good. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Dee Dee. All right. Miss Nancy, you want to come down and give us an update from your corner? You're the ne next contestant. It feels Yay. like you need to play some right. prices right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> First of all, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for those of you that have sent warranties our way. We really appreciate your business. I really appreciate you. And if I could ever do anything for you, please don't hesitate to give me a call. Um, I also, for any of you that are newer, a lot of you probably already have my phone number, but for those of you who are newer, um, write my phone number down right now or get your phone out and let me give you my number. Because inevitably, you're going to have a phone call one day from somebody asking you a question, you're like, oh, what's her number? How do I get a hold of her? So it's Nancy Douglas, 440-796-5309. Right. And I want to remind you all that we can still get any buyers that have closed on the warranty if they close within 30 days we'll backdate the warranty to the closing date which means they'll instantly have history of things being good safe working order so it's a good reason to uh, call your clients and see how their move is going and say hey by the way you can still get the warranty um also seller coverage being that it is non-obligatory which means it can be put on and not necessarily passed on to the buyer so we have changed some of our marketing things. I just want to remind you about that. One is the sign writers. This says home warranty available for this home. It doesn't say this home comes with a warranty. Right. So, but it's a great way to advertise and get the attention of the warranty because buyers still want a warranty, you know, and the sellers got it already that they're having coverage while it's up for sale, that history is going to pass along to the buyer. So it would be a huge benefit for the buyer to make sure that they have it, whether they negotiate it or they pay for it. Um, and then our table tents also don't say this home comes with a warranty. It just 
brings attention to the warranty. These are those little trifold things that you know, they have like little tents and they connect the bottom. But it says here with 210 home buyers warranty, you will have a plan for unexpected and expensive system and appliance failures. Rest easy knowing you have real protection from your budget when you need it. And then it says, ask your savvy agent about real protection, a home warranty from 210 HPW provides. So, awesome. Any questions for me? Well, I'm excited to join you guys. Indeed. Big golf out in the Golf inside. Thanks, <laughs> Nancy. Appreciate it. Rich. I want to say good morning, good afternoon. Yeah, that's right. This is this is throwing us all for a loop, I think. All right. Um, so just like four things I want to cover with everybody. So agency disclosures, we're still not getting those signed when you're presenting offers. And I say we, I mean the whole real estate industry as a whole. It's not just to our office or any particular person. But I will tell you, as a broker, the calls are coming in more now than ever about not getting that form signed. So please. You know, I remember Nick had 20 offers on one property and it was like, do I really have to get 20 signatures on all these agency disclosure forms? Yes. And he did. So I can just tell you, we can do it with 20, we can do it with five. So just get it done when you're presenting that offer because it is really important. In fact, um, there's complaints being filed against agents for this not happening and it is a serious effect. So please make sure you're getting those signed when you're submitting an offer or when you're getting an offer, whether on your listing, whether you're accepting it or not. And I also encourage you to put on there somewhere, sell or review the offer and rejected it only because if you send back that signed agency disclosure and then you send back a purchase agreement or whatever, it can be misconstrued the understanding of what they actually signed and accepted. So um, I always tell you as a professional courtesy, put on that first page or somewhere on the agency disclosure form that your seller reviewed that offer and declined it, get them to sign it and then send it back just as a courtesy. Uh, licensed agents at home inspections. I actually was astonished this past week, just because home inspectors are licensed with the state of Ohio does not mean that they're allowed in the property without an agent present. If you don't have your seller's written permission or you don't get the seller's written permission from the other agent, you or another licensee that is licensed as a real estate agent in the state of Ohio should be at that home inspection the entire time. You can't just show up, open the door and leave. We've actually been having that happen. Uh, you can't do that. That is a, a serious violation. And when a seller finds out, they can file a complaint against you and trust me, it will be taken seriously. So please, if you can't be there, make sure there is a licensed agent in there representing either your seller or your buyer. Make sure you're getting it in writing. You know, the best thing to do is if you can't be there and you're on the buy side is to send that listing agent a message. Do I have your seller's permission for the home inspector and the buyer to be in your house without a licensed agent? You're asking, do I have the seller's permission, not right. the agent's permission? If the agent then writes back, yes, you do, that, come, that, that is good enough to say that you have the seller's written permission because they're an agent on behalf of that seller, okay? Um, garage door openers, this one came up again. Um, you'll see in our purchase agreement, we don't. We just have garage door openers in there. We don't have a number. Some people's contracts actually have a number of garage door openers that you're going to be getting, and they mean it. Like they mean when you know the stove is staying that they also want two garage door openers to stay. And when they get to closing and you don't have those, it's a problem. So I can't tell you how many agents probably in this room or in the business have bought garage door openers or an appliance or two in their career. But pay attention to the garage door openers, really pay attention to what's happening in that contract because buyers expect it and some sellers say, I've never had garage door openers. I used the thing in my car and yeah. that's just the way it is. And if it's in the contract, yes, believe it or not, somebody can, can get you from that. So pay attention. Uh, and the last thing, those of you that are using OpCity, uh, realtor.com, uh, an agent brought this to my attention. We actually, they have a new program where they are giving a incentive or a premium back to the buyer. And I think it's called a buyer rewards program. Sadly, it's your money and all of our real estate money that is giving back to them. But OpCity is saying it's them giving it to them. And it is because they are increasing our fee by 3% on those houses that sell over $150,000 if the buyer qualifies. So instead of it being a 35% referral, they're going to collect 3% more from us to make it a 38% referral. And then Realtor.com or OpCity is giving them, after we pay, after DD sends the check, within 60 days, they're going to give that small reimbursement, 375, I think it is roughly on $150,000. 
back to that buyer. So there is a form that you're going to need to fill out uh, that discloses that to the lender that the buyer is actually getting money back after closing. So if you're using the OpCity thing and have questions, either contact OpCity or contact me, but uh, know that that fee structure is either going to be a 30%, 35 or 33 and 38%. So pay attention to those referrals that you're getting. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. So regarding the signatures on the on the agency disclosure. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go out here and say something I probably shouldn't say, but I got licensed in 2002, and I'm gonna bet that it was probably 2013 that I realized that you needed to have <laughs> the uh, the seller acknowledging the agency disclosure on every single transaction because it's not widely known for some unknown reason. As brokers, we're obviously not doing a good job, or managers of telling people that, or the state's not doing a good job of getting it to us. But it has been enforced since I got licensed and before. <laughs> and I, that's why I keep repeating it because it's not happening. And believe it or not, agents are, it's Ohio revised code and agents are really getting themselves in a lot of trouble by not getting that form signed. Um, people don't believe their offers are even being presented. People are upset when they lose out because they think I did an escalation clause and I went $10,000 above and I wasn't asked for inspections and whatever, whatever. They're doing anything and everything to retaliate, to get a deal put together. So just be cognizant, you know, when you're talking to other agents, they're probably not aware of it. Um, make them aware of it, have that conversation. And when you present it or when you give an offer to another agent, just say, you know, I expect to get this back. Now, I want to be very clear. The law does not say anything about getting that signed back. I'm telling you as your broker, as a professional courtesy, the best thing you can do to keep yourself out of trouble is first of all, present it to the seller, ask for their signature. When you've presented to the seller and you ask for their signature, that you have satisfied the law. If they refuse to sign it, they are allowed to refuse to sign it, but you better mark it on that form when it was presented and that it was refused to sign. If we start seeing 50 of those, because you've got 50 deals in the year, we're gonna know that that's not accurate, right? So you've done your job when you ask for them to sign it. Most times they're gonna take your lead, they're gonna sign it, it's not a big deal. You're, you're just understanding that the, the relationship of the agents, how that works, and you're understanding that they review the offer. But I'm telling you, as a courtesy, it goes a long way with agents. When you send that form back in writing in an email to say, please find this attached and also say that you submitted the offer and was reviewed and rejected. It goes a long way. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Can you repeat your class real quick? Ah, yes. Okay, so Monday, October 18th, 11.45-01, we're going to do it in this room and on Zoom. This is going to be our contracts class, and it's about addendums this time. So Things that we have had to come up recently are appraisal gap addendums, which we have available in dot loop for you. Uh, the listing addendums, there are plenty of them, especially when you're doing a reverse uh, contingency where you're making it contingent upon your seller's home selling before they buy something else, making sure that they're not in a homeless situation. So we're going to be covering that and contingent sale addendums. We're also covering. Okay. So, anyways. Your okay. final class here. I mean, Right. That's good. I'm looking forward to the new training room, guys. I can't wait till you see it. We actually have, there's glass. It's amazing. We can actually see outside, I believe, on the one wall, and it's larger, and there's no column. So it's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're staring outside, not paying attention. That's true. The danger That's is, true. you know, That's true. Just like we'll have curtains to pull down, you know. <laughs> All right, Miss Lynn. And the new training room has air conditioning. <laughs> That's true. We have doors here. Um. So what I'm going to talk to you guys today about is the command, because I know that's everyone's favorite topic, the, their mobile app. This is for the consumer, and this basically brands you to the app. So you all have your own branded app if you use it or not. What it does is it allows your, your clients to um, do safe searches, safe homes, and collections where they can kind of next slide mark but they can kind of go through and everything they do in command it shows that on the timeline so if they are searching a property and they keep going back to that property it shows on your timeline in your command that way you can say oh maybe i should give them a call they keep looking at this specific property and it just gives you a little more leverage to see what they're doing without them really knowing that you're watching them so that was kind of cool and I'm very excited. Um, sometime this year, we're getting a command agent app. Not no more details than that. It's what they want to say. It's coming, and I'm excited. 
I do have a class um, on the 20th. It was on Zoom for advanced people in advance. So anyway, it feels like they're advanced and want to do some real fun stuff. The 20th. Scott Chuckles. Uh, how would you just just on that for a second? How would you define beginner to advanced? Um, so I would say for advanced, we're gonna move. You, you need to have all the basics done. Your you your data. You've already got your contacts in. You've already messed around with smart. You're plans. familiar with what's going on in the side panel. Yep. You know what those things do, and then we're gonna pull it all together and make it useful to you. Beginner, you still need help poking through. If you need help poking through, to send me a the on the tech site, send me a small group. I'm going to start doing small group invites. That way, if you guys are all having trouble with designs, we can get together as a little tiny group and work on designs. But and I also want to start focusing on advance because I know so many people want to do more, and I'm finally ready to do more. Nice. Well, we appreciate the way you're continuing to scale up. Uh, one one note on the oh go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, so is this available already for uh, this one? Yes. Yep. The agents no. So we have the one we have on our app before this shows up on the map. So you can just click on that. So I can just yeah I can show you through community. You can actually download the link. You sign in. You brand yourself to you brand yourself to you. Um, so that way everything that your people do that brand themselves to you, you can see. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk a little bit later about um, what it looks like to own your database, and uh, an app is a fantastic tool to help you to do that. So, a little bit of a teaser there. Uh, thank you, Lynn. Gina. First, I just want to say how excited I am for how many people came to Bold. So I, I think I counted 17 people in coaching. That were there, so that was awesome. great. Awesome. I lost count after seven. You guys showed up in mass. Thanks, like a guys, for coming to that. That was great. And then some of us got to go to lunch and talk all about all the good stuff that we learned. So it was a really fun day, and it will continue as we leave here and go over and do some <laughs> drinking and golfing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so today I want to talk a little bit about um, communication with agents and other agents. So whether you're on the buyer side or the seller side. It is so extremely important that you keep good communication with the other agent. I can tell you, as in particular a listing agent, when I get multiple offers and I see it someone who either won't respond or is going to be a real pain in the neck to work with, I mean, I have to be honest, I do point that out to my seller. Hey, we've got this really good offer, but this agent's a real pain. They're never going to get back to us. They're going to be late scheduling their inspections or whatever I've dealt with with them before versus someone who is you know, will be smooth transactions. So I just had a closing with an agent, um, not in our company. And he said, thank you so much for such an amazingly smooth transaction. And I was like, thank you back. I mean, because it just made the process so much better for the clients and for us and our own frustration level. Um, so it starts right from the beginning. So if you're going to be writing an offer on a property, really the first thing that you should do is be reaching out to that listing agent and saying, hey, hey, Amanda, just wanted to let you know that the showing went great and I'm going to be sending over an offer. Um, maybe it's already sold. And then you have to then go and tell your buyer, oh gosh, we wasted the time and spent the time writing up this offer. And by the time I submitted it, it was already sold. And then that reflects badly on you as well with your client. Um, even though it isn't your fault, they like to pass blame. So you wanna start that communication right away and then take it a step further. So Amanda, tell me, what is it that your seller wants? So what's more important to them? I see the house is occupied. Is possession a thing for them? Um, do they have issues with paying closing costs because this buyer is going to need closing costs? So I always bring that up too. If I'm going to be building closing costs into the offer, I want the listing agent to know because our seller is going to ask, is it needed or just wanted? Because I'm going to definitely present that to my seller a little bit different when I say, hey, look, we've got this offer and they have to have the $5,000 in closing costs. Otherwise, it's a non-issue. They won't be able to buy the house. Um, so you can start that communication going there. And then, of course, staying on time, staying with the target dates on everything on your contract, um, communicating with the agent when the appraisals happened. 
the listing agent's kind of in the dark or as a listing agent, the buyer's agent's in the dark of when the appraisal happened. So whenever I'm a listing agent and I heard from the appraiser, I'm going to reach out to the buyer's agent and say, hey, Ken just wanted to let you know that the appraiser called and he's coming on Friday. So that you know. And then in return, my hope is that when Ken hears back from his buyer or the lender that we're good with the appraisal, he'll reach out and say, hey, all good on the appraisal. So I can pass that on to my client too. So just keeping good, positive relationships going and really just informing everybody right from the start is going to make all the difference with your transaction as we move to closing. Any questions about any of that? I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, tips relative to calls as opposed to texts in your back and forth with um, other agents? I guess I go along with whatever we've been doing. Sure. So if we've been calling, then I'm going to keep calling. If we've been texting, I'm going to keep texting. If I call and they text me back, then I know they want to be texted. If someone, you know, I, I get this a lot, people will text me and then I'll pick up the phone and call. Um, and I'm sure I, I always start with an apology. Hey, Aaron, I'm sorry. I know you text me and I'm calling you back that might be annoying. However, this is a little bit important of a topic. And I think we don't want to be unclear on what we're saying in text. So to me, the difference is also how important is this conversation we're having? Can something get misunderstood in a text? Can the tone be not real good in a text? And that time I would call. So I kind of just fluctuate between both, whether that be the clients, honestly, or um, or the agents, so just depending. Nice, okay. thanks, Gina. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, the PC program continues to produce. Uh, no, novel thought, but it's exciting to see the number. One hundred and forty of... closed as of today. Wow, nice. as of yeah. today, who got one forty? It was Crystal. Crystal, one. yeah. So, for those of you who are just plugging in and getting rolling, exciting to see that growth. Cliff and or Jessica, uh, whatever combo you guys are doing, come on, come on down. <laughs> Welcome back. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. How are you guys? Everybody doing well? Yeah. Good, good. What's up, Zoom land? <laughs> All right, so um, just wanted to make a quick announcement. We are doing the happy hour today at 1899 from 430 to 830, but would love if all of you guys could come. It's just going to be a good time, chance to get it to know um, some of you that don't know Cliff or I. Um, also, just to kind of play off like what Gina was saying a little bit about knowing everybody in the transaction, like having good agents, um, the lender is extremely important as well. So um, if you have people that are coming to you that you don't have a personal relationship with the lender or your client doesn't have a personal relationship with the lender, it's a really good opportunity for you to ask them for a second opinion, ask them to talk to your preferred lender, and then Cliff or I um, can easily reach out to them and give them some of the benefits of working with a local company. We are gonna be doing a workshop um, in November, the beginning of November, and the entire workshop is going to be on how to present um, a second opinion to your buyer. So if they come to you already pre-approved, we wanna give you guys some tips. Um, we're also gonna be having an agent that's coming to speak. Um, he is one of the most successful people when it comes to offering second opinion. So he's gonna give you some tips as well. Um, and then hopefully we can you know, create some more business together. And then Cliff is gonna go over yes. some exciting things that we have. This yeah, it's great news, yeah, guys. And so look, I just wanted to touch base, but this is some really, really good important stuff. Anything that can help your buyers, you know, just get that, get that extra edge and get, you know, possibly their offer accepted. Okay. I don't know if I have enough of these, but I can always make copies and email more, but I'm going to pass these around, you know, my pass those around this guys. And for people on the zoom, this is for our uh, cross countries, fast track approval program. Okay. Now what's unique about this program is, is that we do a, we take a borrower um, and get them fully underwritten. Okay, that means we're already looking at peso, we're looking at tax returns, we're looking at banks, we're looking at everything, pretty much everything except appraisal, title, and their homeowner's insurance, getting that finalized. Okay, and giving them an ironclad, a, a full underwritten approval. Okay, that's big. Okay, because at that point, all we need then is appraisal, title, you know, and, you know, they're fed up to come in home insurance, and we can probably get everything done in 10 days, depending upon how fast this can get done. So this is this is big, guys. I mean, I know not every particular borrower is going to need this particular program. Um, and it's, you know, if you've got borrowers that are out there that may have been frustrated, been putting offers in and maybe not getting their offers accepted and they have the extra time and they want to go ahead and get their documents together for me to get them fully approved, to get them into this program, be like, okay, look, 
Now you're fully approved. So now you can tell your buyer's agent or the listing agent for that matter that, hey, my offer is pretty much as good as cash, but we'll guarantee the closing, you know, because uh, I'll, I'll talk with Chuck on that. We'll be able to guarantee these closings if we got the part of the borrower completely ready to go and barring, obviously, appraisal issues or anything like that. That's the only thing that's going to hold anything up. Okay, guys, so it's very, very good. It's a very strong program that we're offering, you know, all of your clients and that we're going to do across country. Because we are now amply staffed from a processing and an underwriting standpoint, okay, to, to take care of this capacity of these extra loans getting underwritten on top of the normal production that we do have in regards to getting, you know, uh, borrowers underwritten and everything, get everything done. So, I mean, it's great. I just wanted to kind of touch on that real quick, just so you guys have that. Um, and last but not least is who's familiar with recasting? Does anybody know what recasting is? Okay, so everybody has a good, a good general idea of that. That's another big thing that can play into, you know, certain, you know, criteria for buyers too, okay? It's because recasting is once they, you know, we're able to get them pre-approved to buy prior to them selling their conditioning house, you know, then that can be a non-contingent, you know, borrower. They can sell their house afterwards using those proceeds. They'll repopulate and re-amortize their commitment based on the new balance, okay? It's a win-win for everybody, okay? They can remove the PMI. They can get their payment lower to where they expect it to be prior to, you know, but not having their house sold yet. So just good news, guys. We'll talk about that more once we get a chance to get a meet with everybody. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you. All right. Um, okay. Couldn't help but have a little bit of peanuts here. Um, today we are talking about turning your database into a gated community with exceptional client care. This is uh, material that I picked up from my coach, actually. He's a maps coach. Um, and so I'm excited to kind of dive in. We talk, um, so there's kind of four major parts of the real estate experience for your clients. There's the search, we help them buy, we help them sell, but then the question of whether we own our database or not is a real big question. Does anyone want to take a guess what I mean when I say you own your database? Well, You're nurturing it, mm -hmm. making sure you're calling, texting, emailing, making sure you're on top and staying constant contact with you. Yes. Yep. Anyone want to build upon that? Nick and the duck. Owning, I think of having it um, buttoned up and, and kind of perfect to where it's sellable. If you ever grow your business enough to be able to sell that database, if it's crap, nobody's going to want to buy it. Yep. No matter how successful you've been. We learned today that your database is literally the only asset in your real estate business. Someone else is going to buy your business. They're not buying your signs. They, they don't care about your face. Uh, they don't care about your computer. Um, it's not just how many people do you have in there. If there's not systems around that, it doesn't matter. How are you going to have? Pretty much that. You know, some companies, to them, that's their database. You wonder how many you put in there. Mm -hmm. If you can own that, that's huge. Yes. The difference between, yeah, Susan. I was going to say, you own your database, so you're not only keeping in touch with the customer, but the customer is keeping in touch with you. Sure. That's an indic that's a good uh, kind of vital signs check. If my database is contacting me, odds are good I'm top of mind with them. And so how do I systematize that? So it's not just I'm calling Susan because I like her, but because I have um, a process around here. Um, we talk about the difference between running a transactional business and a relational business. And I think sometimes using words like relational organic can be an excuse to be uh, lacking systems. That being said, if you're not running a kind of a, an infinite business think about okay the contracts closed now what does it look like for me to continue to serve my clients you're missing arguably the biggest uh, biggest opportunity in your business um this is a slide that gary keller talked about at at mega camp and i've touched on it um already in a previous conversation um this came on the wings of talking about hey so uh home sale prices are increasing new home builds are increasing gdp is increasing um, you know, all economic data is, is encouraging, but with the exception of inflation. Um, and yet, consumer confidence, and this just goes back four years, consumer confidence is low. Uh, consumer confidence is defined as what does the average person think is going to be coming up in the future? So as we think about owning our database and as we think about consumer confidence being low, what might that lead us to um, conclude for how we should engage in our business. Thoughts? 
But you say what consumer confidence in what is low? In the future of the economy. If your average person you're talking with thinks it's going to get worse before it gets better, how does that impact the way that you engage with your database? Well, yeah. I talk to when I talk to people and they want to know if prices are going to drop. I, I mean, I tell them some things like people are buying <coughs> a lot of rental properties, so they have a single family home that's not coming on the market, and they're purchasing a second home, but their original home is not coming on the market. So I. Well, we talk about home prices probably holding their value for quite a while. You know, the the um, rates are sure. there, sure. and we talk maybe about what you can afford based on what the rates are now. Um, so you speak just to go general with that specific statement. You're getting into data and talking about their particular situation relative to their uncertainty, Doug. That is, as I look at this, it almost seems like there's an opportunity to. Be very empathetic with them where they are, but be empathetic and positive. So, in a sense, you're in, you feel like you can get there with them, but you build that trust and that confidence that if anything does happen or whatever, you're you're still you're very much that go-to person. Yes. You know, I think that's a good time to to shape some empathetic, empathetic confidence. Right yeah. Empathetic confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Positive yeah. Love. That's good. Saw a few flinches. I'm not sure if we're getting the answer or not. Um, so a couple of thoughts. If anyone wants to work with me to fill in the, fill in the blanks, yeah, this is interactive here. I'm conversational. Your database is. I'll accept two possible answers. Data bank. Data bank is one. Ding ding ding. Lifeline. Lifeline. Uh, that's secret option C. Or your business. <laughs> no, that, that, I mean, the fact that two of you said, said it tells yeah. me that it's that, that it's that it's right. You pulled that from somewhere. Uh, it's your business. If you don't have uh, a database or a game plan around your database, you, you don't have anything. Um, to the doctor comment, so your role, is it selling or is it solving? I'll, I'll solve that one for you because we haven't talked about that before. A lot of people feel, hey, I don't want to be slimy. I don't want to be pushy. But if you're, many of you are in this business because you want to help people. I've, I've heard that from so, so many of you. And if you're viewing with consumer confidence being low, how do I help solve people's problems, solve their economic problems, solve their real estate problems? Obviously, staying within your lane, not not uh, not providing legal advice, advice et cetera. Um, but that's that's fun, fundamentally what you do, you're doing. And that's that changes your self conception. That means my 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 time is valuable, and the expertise that I have to provide is valuable. I have pride in what I do. I'm not just trying to get a deal. I'm helping people to solve problems that are actually more complex than a lot of people real, realize. We are frontline responders for our local economies. You know more about the economy than most of the people that you're engaging with. And if you don't, that's a, that's a growth opportunity. What's happening in uh, the nation and the PW, um, the mega camp slides are available on PW Connect. You can see there's all kinds of great data to pull from, but also locally. Um, and that data is available to you. And if you want help in learning how to study days on market and average sale price to list price, that sort of thing, uh, you know that sort of thing. We always come from blank. Who wants to fill that one in? Contribution. Contribution. What does that mean, Nick? Oh man, I think you'd ask right now. Um, I think people, I think our buyers and, and sellers look at us as we're not only we're providing a service, but we are. Um, yeah, I, mean, I don't know the best way to say this, but if people see that we are. Um, you know, whether you're hosting an event or you're giving back to the community and you're contributing in different ways, whether it's for that buyer or for your, your local community, um, I think buyers and sellers will recognize that and want to work with us. Mm -hmm. um, it's a posture. It's a mentality. It's the overcoming the defeater belief like, oh, I don't want to bother someone. Oh, I don't want them to feel like I'm pushy and salesy. But when I'm coming from contribution, when I'm in earnest preparing to bring value, uh, that enables you to do some of the stuff that's a little bit harder, like call your database and, and how's it going, because I'm actually seeking to provide value. I'm not just trying to squeeze deals out of it. Um, so a couple questions. What value do, do you provide? And these are rhetorical questions because I, I need to keep things moving. What value do you provide that distinguishes you from others? What can you say? Not just I'm, I'm nice and I care, um, but... Uh, what are you giving your clients access to um, as you as you continue to seek to nurture that relational business? Um, consumer confidence dips when uncertainty increases. In what ways can you bring clarity or even certainty to your database? Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit more about 
uh, your touch plan and the role of care calls. So I'm going to introduce um, this concept of the real estate checkup. And if I could get help from a few hands, if you guys mind, I guess you need that. Um, and for those of you who are on Zoom, um, Caitlin, let me just share this with you. Pardon my pause. I know I'm going to have to email this separately and we'll drop it on Facebook. So to, just to keep things moving. So uh, this is basic, basically three steps. This is uh, built into your um, your touch plan. We talked in KW about a 36 touch plan, um, calling your database using Ford to reconnect. So Ford is the kind of the rubric for um, fostering relationship. Anyone remember what Ford stands for? Family, occupation, occupation recreation, recreation, dreams. dreams. Yeah, it's and you're not doing all of those, but it's hey, how's how's your mom doing? How's your work doing? And into the thing that you're there to talk about. Um, are you guys going on that trip next summer? How's your golf game doing? You know, I don't need to teach you this, but it's it's you know, for those of you who are the let's get to the point. Sometimes slowing down and hitting uh, a couple points on the the forward arm port. So this is just a script uh, I put in here. I'm, conduct I'm conducting real estate checkups for my friends and clients. I'm finding that in this uncertain moment, many are be benefiting from better understanding where they stand right now in terms of real estate health and booking appointments for next week. So uh, what you're doing as the, as the real estate doctor here is, is setting yourself up for times to, hey, you're not looking to, we're not talking about listing your home. We're not talking about what you're looking to do. It's realizing that your uh, your real estate portfolio, your home, whatever it is, is uh, an important part of your economic health, your financial situation. A lot of people don't know the value of their homes. A lot of people aren't aware that interest rates are where they are right now. Um, a lot of people may not realize the implications for the value of their home having gone up and the impact that that has on their insurance coverage if there were to be a major event. And so as the real estate doctor, you're positioning yourself to have a conversation about Kind of the vital signs of the real estate portion of their um, of their world. So you ask them to send over any information related to their mortgage and insurance. Um, people may not feel comfortable sending you their actual policies and documents, but you know what are the terms of your mortgage? Um, what are the terms of your insurance? If they don't feel comfortable doing that, um, and ask are there particular questions or, or issues that you'd like to dig into when we sit down? So that's in scheduling the appointment, preparation for the checkout. Email confirming date time. Uh, if you're zooming or you're doing this in person, obviously, um, and requesting that information, and then you're spending some time doing some research. Uh, it doesn't need to be an hour. Probably shouldn't be an hour uh, in order to uh, scale this within your business. But what's going on with the mortgage? Um, is their insurance? You know, they bought it when it was worth 150, and that's what the policy is for. And the house is now worth 375 because they bought it 20 years ago. Um, that's gonna. That's an important thing to know. Are there deed or title issues? Are there zoning issues? Um, are they running out of business out of the back of the property? Whatever. Um, overview of market economics. And this is something that you can kind of copy and paste over. What's happening in our state? What's happening in our community? Um, what's happening locally? And then any real estate developments or roads, schools, new developments, rezoning, redistricting, all of those things that can have an impact on our local area. Um, then the actual checkup, you're, you're effectively diving into these things. You're calling ahead and confirming, and you're presuming that they are there. It's not, Hey, can you make it? It's, Hey, I'm looking forward to, um, meeting with you tomorrow morning. Uh, we good for 9am or whatever it is. Um, keep the setting professional and welcoming, whether it's one of our offices, um, whether it's their home, whatever makes the most sense. Reconnect with Ford. Um, for those of us, myself included, who can talk more than we should, um, these are settings, at the end of the day, we build relationships by helping people to feel heard and valued and seen. And so listen at least half of the time. If you're going to meet with them for half an hour, they should do at least half of the talking, but maybe more like 75% of the talking. We're asking good questions and we're coming to understand their situation coming from contribution. You clarify the goals. At the end of our appointment today, you should have a better understanding of your property's value, security, and local economics that can impact those things. Is there anything else that's important for us to discuss today? 
and then we file file through. Let's talk about your mortgage. Let's talk about your insurance. Let's talk about the statistics. Uh, what plans do you have? Are you building on? Are you improving upon the property? That would impact the, the, the value of the property in a significant way. Um, we can talk through our, their, their problems from a tax assessment standpoint. Uh, this is where you know you can run a broad comp. We don't want to be talking about your home is worth this, but it seems based upon my research that your home's worth somewhere in the 175 to 205 range, and kind of giving them a general a general sense of things. Um, there's even opportunity to go into personal. Hey, if you were to lose your income, how long would your family be okay? And this is where you uh, you, you know you need to be mindful of the relationship that you have with someone, but this is a very personal situation. And the, and the closer that you can get to the, the points of uncertainty or the points of pain, the more likely you are to, to be able to serve them in an, in an earnest way. Um, so this is all in there. Um, I don't think I have another slide there, um, but play around with it. Um, and then, and then the, the follow-up is, hey, let's schedule this another one of these six months from now because things will have changed, the market will have changed. Is there anyone else from your family that would benefit from this sort of conversation? You're not talking about, do you want a list right now? You're not pushing, pushing for business as much as uh, bringing value. So as we roll into the theoretically slower months, <clears throat> it's just a theoretical thing at this point, um, as well as an uncertain moment, I think this is a helpful tool as you think about how would I engage with my database in a different way. Um, so any thoughts or questions before we transition to Ms. Andrea? Great, thank you. Andrea. I feel like I just wanted to do something super loud because it was so quiet. <laughs> that, that might be uncalled for. It's like, it's kind of warm in here, we're eating lunch. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> um, I'm Andrea, hi, with Stonegate, and there are a couple of new faces in the room, but most of you guys I know. So obviously we're not upstairs anymore. We've moved over uh, to Higby, so please come see us. Um, I think what we'll do, since you guys are doing a little open house, we'll probably do an open house on our site as well. We'll have doors fun. open and have some, I don't know, I'll coordinate with whoever I need to coordinate. Maybe we'll be dessert and drinks. I don't know if you get to it, but... Anyways, it'll be fun. We'll just have a big old party. Um, how many of you guys know that we have a platform to create net sellers and buyers niches? How many of you guys know that? Not everybody's hand in the room is up, and so my heart is dying a little bit. Uh, we have a, a platform for all of you guys. You're already set up with it. Your Keller Williams user uh, email is your username, and the password is really simple. It's just lowercase password one, two, three. Um, I'm going to resend the link to everybody. You can it's change it. You can change it. <laughs> Don't worry, Miss Techie. You know, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It doesn't give a social security number. <laughs> Nobody can buy shoes. I swear. <laughs> I'm going to resend the link to everybody so you guys can get in there and start using it. Um, basically, you guys can. <clears throat> do buyer side and seller side. For the seller side, we're getting a lot of multiple offers on properties. So you can stack those in there and you can have a tangible way to share every single offer with your clients. You can show it to them in black and white. Sometimes, uh, you know, what's on the surface level um, can really come out when you're showing them a whole stack of all of their offers that they have for their house. Um, like 20 that you have, which, oh my word. I wasn't gonna correct Rich, but it was 32. Uh, 32? Oh, yeah. offers. Oh my word, which, which by the way, just a side note, you guys were talking about that disclosure being signed. Um, I was at a CE class and it was an epic CE and there was about 70 agents in the room. And this was a really, really big debate of what has to be done, what has to be signed, where does it have to go? It's a really big thing. And I, I totally agree with Rich. I think that there are a lot of agents out there not doing it the right way because there were some veterans in there that were like, oh, uh, what, what do we have to do? <laughs> so it was a big discussion. So if you guys see people out there, you know, just give them a little, little nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Hey, let's do it the right <laughs> way. Anyways, I know. Um, so please use our platform. You can do it on your tablet, on your phone, on your computer. You can put a little heart and it'll save them all. And you can go in there and edit it. It's really fantastic. Um, secondarily, I just wanted to, is this, is this the amount? Yeah. Did, okay. Yep. So of that $47,000, how much 
how much that do you guys think Stonegate put into profit share for this quarter? Oh, I don't know. It's more. 17. It's in between the two. 14.5. It's a little bit higher. <laughs> um, Stonegate gave $15,158 as a change. I'm not about details. Um, <laughs> to profit share for uh, third quarter. Wow. So that's a really big deal, you guys. How many of you guys participate in profit share? Oh, that's fantastic. Congratulations to you guys. Um, so all of that to be said, as, as you guys know, as KW agents, you get somebody to come to KW. Now you have a downline and you can participate in profit share, right? That's how it goes? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Um, so it, when you use Stonegate, whether you're a partner or not, we put money into profit share and you're just getting a part of that because you're using us. So I just wanted to remind everybody that it's a pretty big deal. It's pretty awesome. And you guys are awesome. We're awesome. And we make awesome little transaction babies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We need an okay. infographic for that. I didn't really know how to end that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm done unless anybody has any random questions about it. So yeah. we make <laughs> bring that to bring that to the open house. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Andrea. Okay. Appreciate you. Caitlin. Well, following that, how, how, how do you? Um, you just go to the next slide. I'm just gonna talk about Oh, I added this one. That Mark is going to talk yes, about this, this one. Uh, if you're interested in building a team, this is free. It's on Monday. I posted it in our Facebook page or on my Facebook page. It's going to be fantastic put on by maps. So uh, I know some of you are thinking about those sorts of things. So come. Okay. Um, sip, soar, and shift is one week from today. Um, lots of events in the month of October, and we have a lot of RSVPs for this one already. So this one is a big community event. So it's for all of your realtor friends, um, business affiliates, partners, all of that. Um, so it's open to everyone and it's free. It's up at the Maps Air Museum. Um, and that's next Tuesday from four to seven. Bring a bottle of wine and bring another agent from somewhere else. Again, this is a, let's get together and feel yes. all right. Experience. I'm collecting the wine in my office. It keeps disappearing. I don't know why. Yeah. So just keep bringing it. Um, <laughs> and then we have a business planning clinic coming up um, October 20th and the and October 21st. So it's a Wednesday and a Thursday from one to five. We're going, it's a KW Connect Live. Um, and if we get enough people interested, we're going to try to get together and maybe do um, like a uh, streaming like a watch oh, nice. watch party um so stay tuned for that um look on facebook or look on google calendar are your two best bets to find any registration links or zoom links so if you're not if you don't have that google calendar hooked up um it's on the newsletter every week or you can email me and i can help um get that hooked up to your gmail and if you don't know how to add the google calendar talk with me or caitlin it's not not hard everyone yeah. has one with with their kw email help someone do it today so yeah. it's really helpful and obviously right after this well a little bit after this from 4 30 to 8 30 come to 1899 indoor golf um and cross country is welcoming us they're welcoming us yeah. and we're welcoming welcoming them yes <laughs> so hope to see you there hospitality. uh that's it folks it's 3 31 so thanks for the extra 60 seconds Appreciate you. Uh, and thanks to everyone who yeah, helped put this on. I'm <laughs> 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 <laughs>